Hello, ladies and gentlemen, it's Mike here at Game for Scratch. And today we are looking at one by request. I've actually gotten a couple of requests over the years to cover this one, and it's a very remarkably niche game engine in that it targets a very specific style of game, that being role playing games in the Paper Mario style. It's basically your sprites are aligned to the view plane, but everything else is in 3D. It gives you a very cool effect, and this one is available for free with a commercial DLC add on, basically, is how it works. So let's go take a look at RPG Paper Maker. Uh, it is available at rpg-rpg-paper-maker.com. By the way, you need to update your SSL certificate. Uh, and uh, for some strange reason, there is a download now for free button in the middle of the screen that does nothing. All right. So anyways, let's go hands on with RPG Paper Maker and we'll go back from there. This here is RPG Paper Maker. It is uh, pretty easy to use. Basically, you can use right uh, middle mouse button to orbit around arrow keys to navigate around the world and take a look at this sprite right here. Now watch as we rotate. See how it, it shifts to always face the player. Uh, that is kind of the idea. So it's 2D sprites in a 3D world. All of your trees, everything else is 2D. All of your world here is 3D. So we can go here in 3D mode, for example. So let's go ahead. Floor. And we can paint the floor, pick floor tiles, and we can start coloring out the floor in our world. Or we can go ahead and do facing sprites. That's what these guys are right here. So let's say we wanted to add a tree into our world. We can add trees like this. Uh, we can also add in mountains, uh, which basically we add up as cubes like so, and they accumulate. So each layer up, it goes up more. Uh, you can do slopes for mountains. You can also do cave entrances in your mountains. Uh, you can place 3D objects in the world, such as, say, this this chest, which for some reason has the textures missing. Uh, there are a number of different options out there. There's a number of them that are built in as well. So for example, if I wanted to add a chimney to the world, let's go ahead and add that to our list. Okay. And let's go ahead and find our chimney. And now we can place a chimney in the world. So you can place 3D objects and 2D objects in the world. In terms of controlling things, well, that is where objects come in. A variety of different things in the world are objects. For example, this guy right here, I believe, is our player. We can right-click him and say define him as the hero. Now let's go ahead and take a look at the kind of games you can create with this guy by running this one. I'm not going to save my changes right now before running. And here is the game in action. Strangely enough, there is no mouse controls. I don't understand that decision, uh, but you can use the arrow keys to select things. So we'll go ahead, we'll create a new game, and you can see our character. And what we gotta do is run over and get that chest. Inside that chest, there is a sword, and then we use the sword to get into a fight where we can showcase the battle system. So you use arrow keys to rotate the world around and WASD keys to navigate around. Obviously that is definable by you. I do find some of the, the uh, collision detection a little bit wonky at times. So there we are, and I think it's, Enter to use. All right, so now I have a wooden sword and then I hit escape inventory. So you see you got full inventory systems there and there is our wooden sword. I think it's equipped, but I may have screwed that up. So now I got to move this guy back out a little bit. All right, so let's go move back over here and then I come down. He nope, too far. If I come over here, slope down and we move down here, I, oh, okay. So I need to equip the sword. I didn't actually equip it. All right, so equip. All right, left hand, wooden sword. All right, so I got a sword equipped. Now enter, I hack my way through, and let's kill the sheep. And then here you see you're in a side style, uh, typical JRPG style battling system. So that is kind of an overview of the style of games you can create using RPG Paper Maker. Now, how do you actually go about doing so? Well, let's go take a look at our main character. So we, oops. I don't have him selected. Select him. All right, here we go. And we will edit him. You see he is of type hero. You'll notice across the top here, we got a number of different uh, dialogues here. By the way, the plural of data is data. The singular of data is datum. Uh, so data doesn't actually make any sense. Uh, but we go over here and you've got uh, what we want is systems. Now this is where the bulk of your game is defined. You can define things like inventory items, uh, entities in your world, the battle system, you can configure how the battle system is set up, the various different statistics and weapons and so on. Uh, over here, you can set the resolution and your map details. Uh, you can set a title screen and a game over screen here. You create your main menu here. Uh, events and states, we'll get back to that in a second, but this is where you control when certain things happen, such as when a chest is opened, normal, and so on. And we got over here, uh, reactions. These are trees. I'll, I'll show you these in action later on. But what I wanted to show you was model. So model was hero that was applied to that guy. And this is your main hero. And this is essentially how your, your logic is programmed. So this is the guy 
and we'll see him over there again. So this guy right here is this guy right here, and this is your main character. So you're gonna see here, we've got a number of different events attached to them. Up hero, down hero, left hero, right hero, uh, main menu, and so on. So that was when I hit the escape key, you run a command. So you see here, up hero, what we do is move object, this object, uh, condition, ignore if impossible, so on and so forth. And each one of these is basically the same process. Action key, you go ahead and send an event out, out. And so, and if you wanna create a new event, you just come down here where it's got these uh, open and close parentheses and you select it and you can pick an event of various different times. So you can just broaden key presses or time events happening in the world, uh, or you could do uh, user event like so. And then when you're defining the event, Let's do, for example, let's do one of these more complex ones. Here we go. So we here on the pressing of the down key, what we do is we move the object and so on. So we want to add a new event in here. You see, you click there, and then you've got a number of predefined things going on here. So you can change the screen, you move the object around, move the camera around, and so on. Or map settings, battle settings, um, and then some of your structural stuff, things like looping and so on. You'll also notice over here, you have advanced settings. So you can actually create your own plugins using the JavaScript programming language if you so wish. And if we go back to here, no, not systems, up here, you'll notice uh, scripts. There are a number of uh, TypeScript defined scripts out there uh, that control all the various different things that work in uh, RPG Paper Maker. Now, RPG Paper Maker, RPG Paper Maker is written in C++. It is open source, by the way. No, sorry, it's source available. It's under a proprietary license, but the source code is out there. This was written in C++ using Qt, I believe it was. Uh, but the game you're compiling, what you're actually making is an Electron JavaScript-based app. That's why your add-ons or your extensions are done using the JavaScript programming language. Um, so you can set global variables right here, pretty straightforward and probably not the uh, prettiest interface ever for dealing with variables, but that's what you've got. Uh, you set collisions on the various different tiles in the world. You can have auto tiling in this guy so that tiles will draw relative to what their neighbors are and so on. Uh, you've got all the various different 3D objects defined in the world. Uh, let's see, what else do we need to cover here? Uh, most of these are just for resources that you can find in the world. Uh, we'll go click the data's item. This is where uh, various different entities are defined. If you've ever used RPG Maker, you've got a pretty good idea of what you're working with here. Here's where you do things like define characters, uh, their level progression, uh, characteristics and abilities they have, which by the way, once again, to add one, uh, basically just click those parentheses, skills to add a skill, add them right here. Uh, and then the other thing, uh, skills right here. So you see we've got uh, 13 different skills defined. You wanted to create a new skill, you just go in here and basically you can add a new one of like, so let's say we'll create a new one here. We'll call this one uh, uselessness. Ooh, okay, enter committed. All right, do not press enter. <laughs> it commits the entire thing. Uh, so that was under datas and that was under skills. And there is our uselessness. Um, and then this is useless. Okay, enter to commit and close is really frustrating. I did it again. Uh, so anyways, you got an idea of how you set things up. So once you've got your skill defined, you'll notice here you can now give that skill uh, to a character. So this character now has the ability of uselessness. And all of these things are kind of defined that way. You're creating uh, items and, and armor and skills and so on. You can also set up the animations to use. Uh, you set various different frames available here. So you can see uh, this attack or frame attack there. Uh, you can set special effects up and so on. So really everything you need to create a game in a very, very, very specific art style, uh, like you can see right here, uh, is available in this guy. And if you're creating games just for fun, non-commercially, there is no cost attached. But if you wanna sell your game, it's about 60 or 70 bucks. We'll see that, actually let's go look at that now. So now we're gonna go look at uh, some of the details about RPG Maker, leave the hands off section. So here we are again, uh, it's available at rpg Maker. Uh, no, sorry, rpg-paper-maker.com. Uh, you can actually, so since this download link does nothing, you want to click this one right here. That actually shows you the three different versions that are available of RPG um, Paper Maker. You've got the free version uh, and then the commercial version and then the absolutely makes utterly no sense and please don't actually implement this academic version that is not yet available. And what you've got here is you've got full engine features but you're missing the ability to publish commercial games, priority support, and extra guides. We'll get to the guides in a second. There's really good documentation for this guy so don't worry about that aspect. But if you want to sell your game 
uh, you got to pay 80 bucks. And really all that gives you is a DLC. So if I click buy here right now, oh, and I should have covered this earlier on, uh, it's available on all major platforms, Windows, Linux, and Mac OS, which is definitely nice. And then for some reason, this is 80 bucks outright to buy it, or you can use it in academic settings at $30 a month. That actually seems like you're charging an academic setting more money, and they still don't have the ability to publish commercial games, but they do get extra guides. Uh, I don't mind the idea of upselling an educational version, uh, but that it's more money and on a monthly basis instead of a one-time purchase, that seems kind of crappy. So I, I, this tier, I would highly recommend just, just get rid of it. Do not charge school environments more money than you would charge everybody else. That That's completely backwards to the way everybody else does it. Maybe I'm misunderstanding it, but just uh, yeah. So again, it is available on Steam. Uh, you can download it from here. It is free, free to play. And then if you want to go ahead and notice, we just switched over to, to Canuck Money. So that's why the price went uh, way up. But if you want to publish it commercially, it's literally, literally just to download that. And I think this just kind of gets you into the legal right hood. It doesn't change it in any way, shape or form. Now, here it is again. It is up on GitHub. Uh, as I mentioned earlier on, it is a C++ based application uh, in Qt. It publishes out to um, Electron and JavaScript, but the actual tool itself is written entirely in Qt. As you can see, it is very actively updated. Um, but the downside here is, again, proprietary license. And I, I just I hate seeing all these proprietary license for source available titles. I understand why they need it. It just frustrates me that there isn't a standard... Uh, commercial game engine source license out there. And I, I think um, both Unreal Engine and Crying Engine pulled this off where they made their source available, but you still need to license their product. We should start from their license as a template and go from there. So then something like this and Default and other engines that I've covered recently uh, over and over and over again can all use that standardized license. So then I can shut the heck up about this every time I do a video about a source available project. But just to be aware, it's not open source, it's source available. So uh, if you want to get started with it, there is decent documentation. This is available if you click the guides link up on the page. So we go back over here, you click guides, it will bring you to here and it walks you through everything you need to know, uh, setting up objects to move things forward. Uh, and then we even get into uh, plugins tutorial, walks you through everything you need to know to create your own extension using the JavaScript programming language. So, um, if you want to write in JavaScript and, and have more advanced functionality, you can extend everything you see here. But for the most part, I th uh, RPG Papermaker is going to have the uh, functionality that you need. It, just the kicker is, and the thing to be aware of, this is the style of game you are creating. If you do not want something that is grid-based, quasi-2D, quasi-3D, uh, with uh, 2D sprites that align and face the player, probably not the right engine for you. You could definitely ignore aspects of it, but it is really designed for this. But from that perspective, it has all of the tooling you are going to need to succeed. It's an interesting project for sure and one that I would recommend you check out. So that is RPG Papermaker. Uh, they just released version 1.7.0. Since I never covered it on this channel in the past, I'm not really gonna go through what's new in that release. Uh, but you, if you are an existing user, just do be aware, there is a new release out there as of a couple of days back. So RPG, ba RPG Papermaker, which is strangely hard for me to say today. Uh, what do you think of it? Have you used it in the past? Do you have a recommendation? Uh, that's about it. Very, very niche specific subject. So let me know what you think. Comments down below, and I will talk to you all later. Goodbye.